Okay. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the uh, second West Perth uh, Council meeting of the month. Uh, this is the uh, Tuesday with uh, with uh, five twos. Happens uh, once in a decade. Anyways, uh, February the twenty second, two thousand and twenty two. It's also uh, Canada Agriculture Day, so uh, I want to mention that as well. Um, before we um, before we go into a moment of reflection, I would just like to mention that uh, a former Fullerton councillor uh, passed away uh, since our last meeting, Clara Keller, and she was involved in a number of uh, municipal committees and that over the years. So when we do our, um, our um, moment of reflection, maybe we can uh, remember the uh, Keller family in, in our um, thoughts and prayers. So we'll uh, um, open uh, with a moment of reflection. Okay, thank you. All right, so we do have a fairly heavy agenda here tonight. I'm not sure, uh, Jeff and I have a bet whether we'll make it uh, everything on the budget or not tonight and uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so uh, first item uh, is a confirmation of the agenda. Um, is uh, anybody willing to move and second that? The agenda as it was uh, sent out. So uh, Councillor Murray and Councillor Rose, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Uh, does anybody have a conflict of interest with anything on the agenda this evening? Okay, nothing uh, that stands out at the moment anyways. So we have uh, five items on the consent agenda. Uh, is there anything there that uh, anybody would like uh, further discussion or uh, pulled and dealt with separately? Um, Councillor Matheson. Yeah, I'm just wondering about 4.4. Okay. Um, would you, um, uh, you don't want to pull it out and endorse or, it separately? Is that what you're thinking? Um, I'm just wondering if we had um, pull it out and discuss it if there's sure. a... Okay, yep, we can do that. Um, is there anything else that anybody wants uh, uh, further uh, information on? Okay, well, let's let's do 4.4 uh, right now, if you want, and uh, then uh, we'll see where it goes. So, uh, Councillor Matheson, I'll uh, give you the floor. Um, I'm actually just uh, curious if um, our councillor or representatives know from the police services if any of this has been discussed there and whether we should be supporting uh, the city of Sarnia and uh, Perth South, Township of Perth South in this uh, resolution for the catch and release. Uh, Steve, do you want to answer that one? Sure. Um, so no, we haven't really had a discussion at police services board about that, um, but I would be more than happy to bring it up at our next meeting. That's about all I can give you, Cheryl. Yeah, so would you like that resolution um, maybe deferred at this time or re rather referred uh, to the police services uh, committee and let them um, have a discussion on it and then bring it back at a council meeting in the future? Um, I, I think that would be a good idea. Okay, all right. Um, so motion for that to uh, refer it to police services. Yeah, okay, a motion that we refer uh, uh, item 4.4 .4 to uh, police services for further information. Moved by Councillor Bell, uh, seconded by Councillor Matheson. Uh, any further discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Okay, so the consent agenda is there. So we've got 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.3, 4.5. 4.5. Uh, if there's nothing there, a motion that we accept the consent agenda um, with 4.4 .4 out of there. M mover, Councillor Rose, and uh, seconded by um, Deputy Mayor Eight. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. 
All right. Uh, so we do have a delegation tonight. We have um, um, a presentation from Dave Clark, our uh, Perth County Emergency Management Coordinator. And I have to watch my screen. There's Dave, right in the center. So he's going to uh, give us a summary and, of uh, 221 and uh, uh, 2022 forecast. So uh, Dave, I'll turn the floor over to you and uh, you can do your presentation. You're muted, Dave, by the way. One of these days, uh, Your Worship, it'll be, we don't have to say that anymore. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Mayor McKenzie, and through the Mayor to Council, uh, thank you very much for having me this evening. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can share my screen here and do a presentation for you in relation to our emergency management program. Um, can everybody see that now, the main screen? Yep. It looks good, Dave. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll we'll get right into it. I think we, you know, I've been here still under a year, but uh, pleased to say that um, my interactions with everybody around the county has been uh, wonderful and a great group of folks to work with. Um, West Perth, uh, I've had a number of uh, meetings over there and interactions. I'm uh, quite happy to work with the group over there. So in uh, upon my arrival, I, I had a lot of files to go through and a couple other things. And, and one of the first things I did was kind of do a tour of the county and um, a bit of an assessment, uh, you know, using my background on, on what we have and where we're going. And um, one of the things I noticed was that although we are in a collective in the county, that a lot of times um, each, each municipality has their own process for doing things. And, and um, unfortunately as well, because we're smaller municipalities, we don't often have all the positions uh, that we can fill to actually run a, a major event and we'd have to rely on other people. So I looked at possible solutions for that and um, came up with some goals. And, and that was to, across the board, come up with a, a solid base for everybody um, within the county and, and make sure that <clears throat> any training or any of the processes that we used um, were interoperable and available uh, to everybody. And uh, there was a slogan that we had a, that I've come across in the past and it says, train your people and evaluate the process. And that's what we want to do is we want to use that positive energy, the engagement, the skill sets that people bring to the table. And we want to capture that enthusiasm and mold that into our emergency management program and, and then train those people uh, to manage large incidents and small incidents and build their confidence. And what I noticed in the previous CEMCs, there sort of was a flavor. And, you know, uh, I'm not gonna be here forever as, as most positions are not, um, but it would be nice to see a solid framework established and have that carry forward from CEMC to CEMC. And, and it doesn't change for people. And it gives people, like I said, that good solid base of training. Um, <clears throat> so what we wanna do is build incident management teams that are interoperable and do that over a three to five year process so that people uh, don't feel overwhelmed and intimidated by the process because we're not here to test people. That's the last thing we want to do. We want to enable them to be able to better respond. And I think a good example of that was uh, this last weekend with the uh, you know, severe weather event that happened in the county. And we had uh, you know, a number of things to do and got it accomplished without even standing up the EOC. So kudos to everybody involved. So what we were able to do was go through and, and under the Emergency Management Civil Protection Act, look after all the compliance items for the province. The province initially gave us a buy the year before on our regulatory compliance due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But then in August last year, late August, they said, nope, you have to do everything and do uh, that. So we were able to take the program working with uh, our alternate CEMC and um, the CAO, the mayor, um, emergency services, chief hunter, uh, and we were able to uh, put together a program and execute that. And not only did we submit it to the province and they said, yes, it was good. We actually raised the bar, I think, a little bit and, and, and uh, elevated that. So uh, kudos to everybody involved there. And you can see all the different items that we have to do under the act. One of the other major things we did over the last year and a bit is uh, deal with the COVID-19, the vaccination clinics. And we had main um, mass vaccination clinics in both Stratford and Goderich, but then we also had the satellite clinics uh, throughout the county and uh, in Mitchell uh, hosted at the community center a number of times were uh, the smaller clinics and they were a great success and that was uh, largely due in part to um, the staff at the community center to Ashley um, 
and the other members and uh, their ability to host and, and work with the health unit. So uh, at the time when I first put this together and we're over this number now, but we had over 154 mass vaccination clinics and that includes the satellite clinics with, uh, you know, we're now uh, over a hundred um, uh, and 2000 vaccinations given uh, through, the, uh, through the county. And that's just for Perth County alone. That's not including uh, Huron as well. Uh, I sat on three committees in relation to those uh, uh, vaccination clinics and assisted with HPH and was the, the main uh, liaison for them. Uh, we have sunsetted the mass vaccination clinics and now we're down to um, spot clinics uh, from time to time. And I don't have the latest uh, um, calendar up, but I believe they're still going from time to time to maybe do one in Mitchell um, in order to continue because we're, we're not done with getting everybody vaccinated who needs to be vaccinated, but the push has now gone to the smaller clinics and to the um, uh, doctor's offices and pharmacies. We also engage with the University of Toronto uh, critical, infra uh, critical Infrastructure Engineering uh, Group. And that's where we got fourth year students, sort of the cream of the crop uh, in Canada, uh, who took a look at a problem with no background on the problem and came up with some potential solutions. So we got to see things through a fresh lens. So one of the things we examined that, uh, for example, in West Perth and uh, kudos to uh, Chief Hunter and, and some of the others who were involved and uh, was looking at the use of anhydrous ammonia. Uh, now anhydrous ammonia is used in agriculture. It's also used in food processing, but what comes to mind as well as uh, in Fernie BC uh, a number of years ago, I think about five years ago, there was three deaths at a uh, municipal arena where uh, they had an incident with the anhydrous ammonia in their chiller. So uh, it was good to see that through the uh, lens of the students and those studies are available for anybody who wants to see the solutions. Uh, and then we also did the same with the courthouse security at the county courthouse. Um, moving on to our emergency plan, some of the findings of our exercise was um, and uh, in reviewing with the Emergency Management uh, Program Committee and the ECG, the plans could be better. They could be, and it's not to take shot at it, it's just they're, they're not very user-friendly. So in the event that we have an emergency, knowing what to do and how to do it sometimes is a little bit ad hoc. So uh, even our uh, notification procedure, and I believe it's a West, West Perth uh, exercise, Chief Hunter called the after hours uh, folks and it took a number of rings before he got a hold of somebody. So we're well on our way to correcting that. And that's why we exercise is to find these gaps and fix them. And we've been working with Spectrum, um, uh, the young lady there uh, and our communications officer and stuff. And we've updated the contact list for West Perth and all the other municipalities as well. Uh, so we're well on our way to taking uh, something we found in the exercise and fixing that and make it more user friendly. Uh, we're also looking to update the plan. Um, I'll show you later in the presentation how we're going to go about doing that. We're looking at our hazard identification risk assessment and we're looking at the impact of climate change. Uh, right now, when someone does a, a HIRA for a municipality or a region, um, a lot of it is subjective and opinion based. There's no real data. So again, we've engaged with um, a consultant uh, through the University of Toronto at the county's expense um, to look into that data. How can we predict uh, our severe weather events, how those are going to impact our critical infrastructure, and then take that data and put it towards future capital projects and, you know, what bridges or if we're going to move something around, uh, how we do that, taking into consideration the potential impact from severe events. Um, we want our plan in the future to be easy to use. One of the asks from all the lower tier municipalities was uh, we want it to be accessible on our phones, on our uh, tablets, on our, uh, our computers. And we want to have that commonality in the, in the plans as well. Uh, we want it to be available with the use of technology and we applied for it successfully and got a uh, um, modernization grant through the province where we're going to be engaging uh, with, the, uh, with a consultant to look at the use of technology in our emergency operations center, because uh, maybe it's not the best thing to have people respond out to an event if they're you know, at risk and stuff as well. So going back to our exercises, we did six around the county, all of them were the same, but the purpose of the exercise wasn't to solve the problem of the tornado or the two tornadoes impacting the area. It was to look at um, how we assess emergencies, how we can use our plan, uh, our notification systems, and how we would stand up our ELCs in the case of an emergency. Um, as a result, uh, we came back with some good findings and some identified areas for improvement. So what we saw was some excellent collaboration between 
our internal and external stakeholders. Um, everybody had great knowledge in their area of expertise uh, and, and brought that to the table and shared it. And we even built some new relationships and stakeholders because the time to make those relationships and build those is not at three o'clock in the morning during a severe event. It's, it's do it ahead of time and know people on a first name basis if you can. We identified some areas for improvement. Uh, we're always looking to get better. Uh, so looking at how we structure our plan, uh, you can probably see behind me, I've got a whiteboard in my office here at home with all the different uh, uh, changes we're looking to improve the plan with. Uh, what sort of content goes into our plan, making sure again, that plan is accessible, our contact lists are up to date and our activation procedure is specified. We wanna come up with workflows um, for people to utilize. Uh, for example, with that notification process, what is the workflow you go through to get everybody to the table? Um, looking at documentation and how we create incident action plans to solve the problem and our use of technology, as I said before. So how do we get there? Well, we use the data and, and we use the science and we look at uh, things we learned and then we apply it. We don't make it an opinion. It should not be David Clark's opinion or somebody else's opinion. It should, we should look at collectively the problem. So I came up with an after African report and improvement plan. I put it out to the communities. And we looked at a couple of different things. Uh, we're going to take that data, we've identified some of those gaps, and we're gonna to put together a three-year to five-year training and exercise program that will train everybody from the ground up. And again, when we say the training, it's going to be uh, Perth County specific uh, in relation to the scenarios and also Canadian and, and accredited training. Um, so that is uh, mapped out and we'll be using a company from uh, New Brunswick actually, uh, who does an excellent job on that. Um, we're also, we've already talked about our update to our plan and our hire revamp. Um, and then the EOCs, how we stand up our EOCs, what the format should be, what should be in there, what should be the structure. Can we go to a hybrid EOC with the use of technology and stuff so that if somebody has to come in, we're not putting them at peril or risking their safety to come to a physical location. And we, as we are seeing here tonight, using Zoom and, and those types of technologies, we can bring a group together and we can uh, actually have um, great discussions and solve problems. So, um, and then again, using that technology and modernization grant. So in the, uh, in the staff report that I put out and documents available um, in a bit more detail than what's on the screen right now, I've outlined our compliance items for 22, 23, and 24, and then also some of the training below. So we're beginning with a, uh, an online training, uh, video training for folks at the bottom level of ICS 100. That's the incident command system. Um, and then as you can see, as we go through the years, we progress to 200 and 300. Uh, we'll be looking at doing a uh, introduction to emergency operations center setup and management this year. And then also after the elections, uh, we're going to do a course called uh, Incident Command System for Elected Officials that has uh, council members uh, come to the table and uh, the important role that you pay or play when we have a, a major emergency. And so we'll build on that year after year after year. And the nice part is, is it's not just one community building, it's all the same for all the communities so that in a time of need, we can pull from their uh, people to bring them in and, and help staff and solve uh, the emergencies. So um, it, again, I think we've got off to a great start. Um, the, uh, the emergency services, great to work with them, work with the, with the municipal staff uh, and council. And uh, that's, that's really the year that it's been. And I hope that it just keeps getting better as we move forward. And I hope we don't need to actually use the stuff, but uh, as we saw last weekend, there's always things that, uh, that come up. So uh, it's best to be prepared. And uh, your worship, that's all I have for you. If uh, there's any questions. Oh, sorry, you're, you're on mute. Uh, yeah, Lindsay. that's <laughs> contagious. So, uh, yeah, yeah. See. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, if you can uh, unshare your screen, yeah, uh, sorry. Then I can see if anybody yeah, has any questions. Go. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dave. So any questions um, for Dave on, on his presentation? Okay. I don't, don't see any questions here. So very good. Um, All right. Job well done, Dave. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a pleasant evening. And uh, again, I look forward to seeing you all out at the trainings as, uh, as we move forward as a group. Very good. Thanks a lot.
Okay, moving on, uh, next item is uh, the operations manager. And uh, this is a, a report uh, that we had asked uh, Mike to do with regards to, uh, to um, uh, sidewalk and snow removal in the wintertime. So uh, Mike, I'll turn it over to you. Good evening, your worship and the rest of council. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to um, read my report regarding enhanced levels of service for winter sidewalk snow clearing. Um, I won't go over it with you. Um, however, I'm more than willing to hopefully answer any questions that you may have regarding it, so. Okay, thanks Mike. Um, so we'll open it up for questions then. Um, Steve, go ahead. Councilor Harold. Hi. Thanks for doing that, Mike. Uh, that was a, a lot of information in there and good information too. Thanks for putting that together for us. Um, any chance we could sneak a little more info from you if we were to ask about um, some estimates um, for the hamlets like Dublin and Moncton? Um, it's it's a little more complicated than just me providing you numbers. Uh, there are two unique circumstances regarding the um, doing uh, sidewalks and hamlets, and I can briefly discuss them with you. The first one being Dublin, we have a three-year term with a local contractor that's doing it for us. Um, um, if we decide to uh, do uh, a, a one more section of sidewalk or a couple more sections of sidewalk in Dublin, it'll change the scope of the work and um, it'll um, expose us to um, potential more, uh, not liability, but more insurance um, complications uh, just because of the way that we are handling that situation there because we are unable to find a contractor to do it for us. And it's so difficult to find contractors to get insurance to do municipal work. Um, so it's a very unique situation there. In regards to um, Moncton, <laughs> it's, um, we, we had a, a contractor doing it for us. And then once again, regarding the same issues with insurance, he was unable to get insurance. So the municipality of North Perth decided to take it upon themselves to purchase a, an additional unit and a trailer. And they're now providing that service uh, for sidewalk clearing for us. Um, they were always, um, they were the first ones to do Moncton. And then the municipality decided to uh, change our policy and procedures to um, do uh, Queens Highways and at least our side, which would fall under that section of uh, Perth Line 55 and Highway 23 North. Um, the issue that I have is that Mitchell really only owns one street in Moncton in that Shady Street. So there will be have to be some discussions with North, North Perth to discuss if they're willing to extend that service to us. But it also brings in a political aspect of it because then we would be asking North Perth to plow West Perth Road or sidewalks when the rest of North Perth sidewalks would not be snow cleared. So um, it could create a divide in, in the hamlet of Moncton. But um, if you're uh, wanting me to investigate that possibility, I'm more than able to reach out to North Perth and uh, ask them if they're willing to at least entertain that option. Uh, Councillor Tam. Um, is it possible, Mike, to have like a primary and a secondary road, uh, kind of like we do with the different classes of roads? Like, um, say if you had a second shift or a part-time shift that went out in the afternoon and did some of the the other roads that we don't do now, um, where there, we didn't have the expectation that they would all be done by eight in the morning or whatever, just to do, uh, to clear them when we can. Um, we, we basically do have a primary route and that's the route that we do from seven o'clock till eight o'clock. And that is to do the highways and to get in, and to complete the school zone. Um, uh, we, uh, when we talk about primary and um, secondary roads, we really don't have any of those designations for our uh, town of Mitchell, just because of the volume and the size of the town. So we like have no collector or arterial roads or anything else. If you want, we could look at possibly um, 
trying to classify our roads and the sections of, uh, of sidewalks a little bit better uh, during for road counts and all that. But as of right now, we're trying to complete them all under class four sections of roads and sidewalks, which are in many instances well above the, 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 the current class of road classifications. Um, other questions? I know at uh, one of the previous meetings, we got into a bit of a discussion about uh, widths of sidewalk. And I may be going out on a limb here, but uh, in referring to, uh, to Dublin and Moncton, um, I'm not sure. Um, I know there's some pretty narrow sidewalks in Dublin. I'm not even sure that there's sidewalks on all the streets. Uh, I know there's some narrow ones. The, the sidewalks on the side streets are in, in Dublin are three feet. They're three extremely feet. old. And uh, eventually we need to, it, it, and it's on our five-year forecast, is we need to do something with those streets in Dublin. Uh, they're getting into bad shapes. So we need to um, remove or pulverize and redo them and uh, establish some curb and gutters there to help with the drainage and also place at least one good, uh, one side of, uh, 1.5 meter sidewalks there in Dublin okay. too. All right, uh, Councillor Harold had a question, I believe. Yes, thank you. Um, so thanks for that info, Mike. That's I, I can understand that insurance deal that we you were talking about. The lot, I'm sure it's it's tough. The contractors can get insurance to do municipal work, but it's pricey, pricey, right? Like the, that's that's the whole game there. I understand that. Um, but that, I guess if that's, if that's part of the expense, well, that's part of the expense and we'd have to just see if that makes any sense or not. Um, so one more quick question. Have we, have we looked at, um, any legal advice on where we stand on doing a sidewalk clearing? Yes. Uh, CAO, Mr. Brick and, uh, Daniel Hobson have investigated that scenario and I'll let Jeff speak upon that. Sure, I'll speak to it, and it's a it's a good question. Um, we did we did seek a legal opinion, um, and we we sent it a we sent it last week or the week before. We actually obtained the opinion yesterday. We've had a chance to review it. We have a few clarifications that we need, and um, and really, I I don't want to get into the details of the opinion because in open session, it's uh, probably not appropriate. But it, I I will summarize it by saying it really boils down to risk management and. Um, we, we can't completely eliminate the risk uh, that the municipality would be found liable or what would be, would be uh, or someone might try to find us liable. We can't eliminate that risk, but as uh, staff through our uh, policies that we bring forward to council and our procedures and using the minimum maintenance standards and council and approving policy, we can manage that risk. And um, I really, you know, everything we're going to do here, we're going to work to, to manage that risk and try to minimize it. We're really in a very good position where we don't have a, a terribly litigious community. However, um, our communities are changing and other communities like our community will tell you that um, their makeup is changing somewhat and, and you, you tend to move to a more litigious environment. So we don't, I don't have a report to give you on managing risk tonight or an update on it but I, suffice to say that we've received the legal opinion and we have some angles we need to to take a look at okay thanks jeff um any any further questions or unsolved answers at this stage of the game okay um so jeff you'll be coming back with that uh, information, I guess, more detailed in a future meeting? So, yeah, I, I think a couple things. I, I, this discussion, I believe, is um, being considered by council either for the current budget year or perhaps for the fall or perhaps for the next budget year. And um, the information is available. The rough cost estimates are available and hopefully uh, council feels that they have the information to know what our cost estimates are. Um, and we'll be obviously presenting the budget tonight. 
um, having some deliberation on the budget and then coming back on March the 21st and asking you to make choices for any changes or additions. And so um, I think the information is there before Council. Of course, uh, the impact on the current budget year will be by the time we would approve it for this year, we would be past this winter operation season. So it would only be for next season. So it would be less impact except for the capital part. And on the on the mitigation or on the um, liability mitigation, I will report back if there's an action or a change in policy needed, but if it's simply risk management, we will we'll be able to move forward with the advice and uh, make the minor changes and bring those back to council. Okay, very good. Okay, last call. Any further questions for uh, for Mike on on his report? Uh, Councillor Harold again. Sorry, uh, Mike. So so can we uh, have you uh, approach North Perth about Moncton and just open the discussion with them? Yep. I, okay. I have no issue with, with opening that. And not only that, um, if council is really pushing or wanting to to know more about the cost of uh, doing uh, hamlets uh, outside of Mitchell, uh, there's also the other option of uh, purchasing a trailer and also floating a trailer and, and the guy around to, to do all that too. So it's just that the service that we provide in Dublin we won't be able to match that current level of service by the time we would get there. Uh, the kids would already be well into school, so that that's the only issue that um, I, I'm I would be more concerned about is the expected levels of service that they're currently getting. We wouldn't be able to match or meet. Okay. All right. Uh, if there's no further questions, and I don't see anybody else's hands going up here. Uh, I have a resolution here that uh, the Council of Municipality of West Perth accepts the enhanced levels of service for winter sidewalk snow clearing report for information. We have a mover and seconder for that uh, recommendation. Councillor Rose and seconder, uh, Councillor Harold. Okay, last call. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Opposed, if any. And that is carried. Okay, thanks, Mike. Thank you. All right, moving on, uh, Recreation and Facilities Manager uh, Darcy is here, and uh, he has a bit of a report about uh, extending the uh, ice for the year. So, Darcy, take it away. Thank you, uh, Mayor McKenzie and Council. Um, you had my report in front of you. I'm just going to highlight a couple things, and then I will gladly answer any question. Um, First one would be, I just want to note that this year we are saving a lot of staff resources with the capital project at the pool. Normally the pool between washing, painting, scraping, that is uh, about two guys to three guys, two to three weeks. Um, and that would usually happen starting in mid-April, depending on weather, um, through to May. So if that were still happening, we would be uh, out of staff resource. But this year we do, we did free some up with that um, extra capital project. So that's where we can use that staff hours to keep the arena open for an extended time. Um, the hours that we have, uh, that I did bring, put in mind are from the Hawks. We have actually not gone out to the user groups. So we would, as soon as it was approved by council, um, we would go out to all the user groups to make sure they wouldn't want additional time and work with them on that. But the Hawks have approached all the uh, user groups and have said that they, uh, this is what they're committing to. Um, and as I noted in my report, we would reserve the right that we would only book for about a week in advance, because if the Hawks did go into playoffs, we would look to take the ice out at that point in time, um, unless things change. But as of right now, that's what I'm recommending, that we keep it in as long as the Hawks are in the playoffs. Um, and as I noted in my report, we would look at a condensed schedule. It would I don't have the exact schedule right now. It would be on, on what user groups would like, but I'm looking, I'm thinking like a Wednesday to a Sunday, um, and Saturday and Sundays would be like a 10-hour day that we would book. Um, and uh, yeah, and as I've already noted, uh, bookings would only happen during the Hawks playoff. As soon as the Hawks playoff run was done, we would then take the ice out. Other than that, I'll gladly take any questions. Okay, uh, thanks, Darcy. Just want to, um, and I see um, uh, Councillor Duck's hand is up, and I know what he's going to say, but I'm going to give him the privilege of uh, saying. Up in the top corner, um, 
or or you can go to the bottom and it'll say mute. I think there we're good go. there now. Yep, you're good. Uh, I just wanted to clear conflict of interest with this, uh, Mayor McKenzie. I am the team equipment manager and uh, obviously do have some uh, conflict here. So I'm just going to exclude myself from this, if that's okay, and uh, let you guys carry on. Okay, thank you. Yep, so noted. Okay, uh, any questions for Darcy with regards to that? Uh, Councillor Tam? Um, is it right, Darcy, that the last two, if they make it all the way, the last two series are in Guelph? So the, their their last game would be May fourth in Mitchell. Um, okay. That was if they go seven games, absolutely everything. May fourth would be their last, and then the final four teams go to a tournament in, in Guelph, and that's okay. how they determine the overall champion is that after that tournament in Guelph. But their series could go as far as May fourth in Mitchell. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Bell. Just a quick question. In the past, we've been asked to um, keep the ice in longer. We've kind of, as a municipality, dug our feet in saying that we can't handle the warm weathers. weather into May. Do we foresee a problem there if they're, you know, good for the Hawks if they do make it? I hope they do. But um, do we foresee problem come May, come end of April? Um, Mother Nature will tell us. Um, I would never go out and guarantee yes, and I and I've said this to the Hawks. I would never go out and guarantee if we get a week of thirty degree weather, there is the chance that, that roof starts basically raining with condensation. Um, but we have made some upgrades. Um, new compressor, new chiller is a huge upgrade. Um, insulation around the arena is a huge upgrade. Um, how that performs without having a year under our belt, I don't know. Um, but I'm confident that as long as we don't get crazy warm weather, we should be okay. Um, but again, we'll see what Mother Nature has to bring and how the how the the building reacts. Um, we've definitely done some improvements to this, but how they how they come, we'll, we'll only be able to see when the weather hits. Thanks. We're cer we're certainly in a in a better situation than what we were last year. Um, with, with the upgrades sorry. that we've done. So um, do you have a follow-up, uh, Sherry? Just, just a quick follow-up. Sorry to interrupt. I didn't mean to do that. Um, so would we put that in our agreement fairly? Um, how we would put that in our agreement? That if the weather, which quite often does in April, turn very warm, that they would have to find alternative. Like if it turns out that we're doing that, would we make sure that legally we put that very in plain English that if we can't handle it, they're gonna to have to find somewhere else and, and hope that, that hope it doesn't happen, but make sure we do. For sure. And I can definitely um, have that conversation and get that in writing. I mean, we always have it in our contract that if it's uh, pressures beyond our control that we can't supply the arena, that we have to close down due to safety issues. It, we don't we don't have a choice at that point, but um, the Hawks do uh, definitely know that there is that, uh, that chance, but that we'll do our best to, uh, to accompany them as long as we can. Okay. Anybody else? Question? Oh, Nicholas, go ahead. Are there any bookings that would be displaced uh, already on the books, uh, Darcy? Just, just the one I mentioned in my report there. Um, we did have a booking for the ice pad. Um, I have talked to that user group and they have gave me the go ahead that if they, if the Hawks are still in the playoffs and the ice is still in that they would move to the hall with their bookings and they don't see uh, a big deal with that. Um, that would be the only one that we would be displacing. Okay, anybody else? Okay, I don't see anybody's hand going up. So we do have a recommendation here. And uh, the recommendation is that the municipality of West Perth directs the recreation and facilities manager to extend the ice season to the length of the Mitchell Hawks playoff run. We have a mover and seconder for that. Uh, Councillor Tunkowski and Councillor Rose. Um, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Thank you. Thanks, Darcy. Okay, we're down to uh, CAO's report and uh, greenhouse gas reduction plan. So Jeff, uh, it's all yours. Thank you, Mayor McKenzie and good evening, Council. I, um, the report was uh, distributed with the Council agenda starting on page 53. I 
I simply, I want to point out a couple of things. We intended to bring this report on February 7th to Council. Um, there's a couple of changes that have happened though and, and bringing it now turns out to be a uh, an opportunity to sort of see the uh, the further evolution of the project. And I, I articulated that in the report. So I want to mention that Amara Kartik, who is the, uh, was the climate change coordinator uh, hired on behalf of the seven municipalities and on a contract was an employee of North Perth. Amara um, terminated her contract and moved to a full-time job, which is likely the fate for this job continually if we don't find a way to uh, stabilize it into a permanent position and um, figure out how the partner arrangement can work as we move to implementation. I, I feel that um, there's a lot of words in this report to describe where we've been and how we've arrived at the destination we're at today. And I, I'll try to answer questions about them with Amara not being in her position any longer. She's not able to assist us tonight. But um, if there's questions that I can't answer, I can go off and try to get those answers. But I really would prefer to talk about the future. And um, the regroup with Amara leaving the position has given us an opportunity to, uh, as, a, as a project group, assess um, options for what we do next on the climate change agenda for the seven municipalities. Um, there's been a couple of developments on that. Stratford has indicated that they would like to focus on more urban oriented climate change responses and tactics, which um, taking a long look at that and thinking back about it, I think that actually perhaps makes the path clearer for us because some of the complications can be that with very different uh, municipal partners in the project, we end up with very complicated uh, instructions for a climate change coordinator and knowing that as we move into implementation there'll be a lot of work for the partners having the partners be more constituted of rural and uh, agricultural communities not that we don't have urban areas but we're more we have a more of a culture of rural and agriculture in West Perth and North Perth even and, and um, if, the, if these partners move together I think that frankly provides an opportunity um, we're aware that County Wellington went down a similar route with City of Guelph involved and it becomes clear that that might be a good solution. And then finally, in terms of kind of looking forward, I'm, I'm working with the other CAOs in the county about what a reasonable work plan for 2022 would be to keep doing work towards this with the hopes that the county will consider a permanent position in their budget process in 2023. And the work plan was included as the second attachment at the very end of the report. It's very preliminary, but I think it begins to shed light on how we will move from big picture sort of project to describe the, the climate change issue locally here, but really roll up our sleeves and get into implementation. And, you know, having a county clean water project and having um, a, a committee to support the project and agriculture committee are two sort of actions that I think address a lot of the concerns we've had. And I think if we get to implementation, we can find ways that the climate change portfolio and the climate change implementation plan that the municipality has available will actually be a resource that our agriculture community and our urban community can use to access funds and to clear the path as we move forward rather than it being seen as a barrier. And with those comments, I, I will um, gladly uh, answer the questions that I can answer to the best of my ability and take any others back. Okay. All right, uh, questions for Jeff. Well, your ability to answer must have been quite well or quite good. Either that or you've just baffled everybody because I don't see any questions. Nicholas. <laughs> I'm glad that you shared the survey results uh, with, with us. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll just point out that it was about 55 respondents from uh, West Perth uh, uh, that uh, out of that 911. And then I then when you also look at breaking it down uh, down to agriculture or farmer level, so out of the 911 from Perth County, uh, less than 40 of them were farmers. 
Uh, so so we, we did, and that's all of Perth County. So we didn't get too much feedback from that uh, agriculture community, uh, I didn't think. So I, I think I would like to uh, keep working towards a, a, a greenhouse uh, gas uh, plan for West Perth, but, I, but I'm not sure that th this reduction plan that we have here quite has all of the stuff uh, that, that we are, are looking for. So I, I like to work toward um, some specific goals um, and then an implementation plan for, for West Perth as well too, but uh, maybe not what, what we see in today's current plan. So uh, that, that's where I would sit is uh, not maybe at, at today's current plan, but uh, work towards one, uh, a plan for sure, but with specific goals and objectives uh, in mind. Thanks, Nicholas. And, and if I can answer that question, I, I, um, I hear the I hear the concern, and I I view the current plan as a guiding document. But I believe the implementation plan and the further engagement with the agriculture community is where really where we're going to be able to refine the goals. And I'm I'm quite into that. having done quite a bit of work on this in the last week. I think. Um, and actually, and having a conversation with Councillor Chankowski, he pointed out something very profound to me around um, when the um, when the uh, farm, uh, I'm sorry, I've just lost the name of it, the Environmental Farm Plan Program was developed. Um, there was really good training opportunities provided to support farmers. Um, and I'm just focusing on agriculture for a moment because I think that's the source of the question. Um, there was a really good training program put in place to provide farmers with the support to get access to the training and to sort of, if you put it in the climate context, to sort of hear from peers about best practices and opportunities that are climate adaptations and climate mitigation that we might already be doing. And the opportunity to sort of uh, devise a plan and to think about our climate actions from peers and from agricultural specialists to agricultural landowners, I think creates that environment for positive conversation. And I think um, the implementation around something like taking the clean water program that's recommended for the county and adapting it to be a clean water and climate change program could be the, the vehicle to sort of transfer some seed money or some incentive money to the agriculture community and supports to help to adapt for climate change and mitigate for climate change. And so I think adopting the plan is the first step in that journey. I don't think we have to feel that the goals won't, I think the goals will be amended through the implementation plan. And it's really a starting point. That's huh. my opinion, but that, that's how I feel about it. Well, I think, uh, you know, to sum it up, and I see Nicholas has got another question, but it, it's a work in progress mm -hmm. is what it is. And we got to start and, and uh, build on on uh, on the base and go from there. Go ahead, Nicholas. Yeah, today, the federal government announced, I think, $50 million uh, of uh, funding that uh, is going to come into Ontario that the Soil and Crop Association, Ontario Soil and Crop Association is uh, going to be able uh, to deliver uh, to help with the greenhouse gas uh, reduction uh, in, in Ontario. So, so that's some, some excellent opportunity uh, uh, coming, I think. Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, the, where I would like to focus back, back to is the corporation of the municipality of West Perth. What can we do to reduce uh, greenhouse gases? Yeah, and, and on the first, on the first uh, point, thanks for pointing that out, Nicholas. I didn't catch that in the, uh, in the news today, but that follows that model that we were sort of anticipating. And and really, I think uh, based on past experience and, and perhaps knowing the, con the conflict around carbon credits, that it's quite conceivable that, you know, there will be tax credits for operators that have taken the farm plan and have, um, and have um, worked, you know, to have a plan for their own, taken the training and have a plan for their own property and then could recover carbon taxes as a tax credit to sort of ensure that that um, there's an incentive for participation and and to, to ensure that people are looking at ways to reduce their impact and and I think through implementation we'll find out lots of ways that carbon or that uh, 
agriculture contributes positively and we can document those because they're not documented. So um, I, I, yeah, and I just feel that um, there is a very strong possibility that these programs will be tied to the municipality won't set the standards for the local operators. It won't be us that say they have to have the standards, but our overall plan will give us the access to funding to assist those um, to assist with those kinds of projects. And that's why I'm proposing that we adopt the plan and move forward with its implementation. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Dean, go ahead. Through you, your worship, um, my comments, um, possibly concerns, but more comments are the next coordinator. Um, I feel we need that coordinator um, to be experienced in the ag sector, um, have enough experience and um, practical ability to understand what's happening in the ag sector um, in terms of developments on this topic. Um, also, that next coordinator has to be able to um, reach out and network with the various producer groups and commodity groups that we find in West Perth and in the rural part of Perth County. Um, like that practical knowledge and expertise has to be in our ag industry has to be tapped into by the coordinator and kind of uh, create a team effort uh, for this thing to work. We, we need the input of the local producers and the local community um, and, and their buy-in for this to work. And that's what our next coordinator needs to be able to, to harness. Thank you. Okay. Good points, uh, Dean, thank Completely you. Completely agree. Completely yeah. agree. Um, yeah. That's exactly it. All right, any, any other comments? Okay, we have a resolution here. It's a fairly lengthy one, but I'll read it. Uh, the recommendation is that the uh, municipality of West, West Perth adopts the Creating a Healthy Environment Greenhouse Gas Reduction Plan 2021, and that the municipality of West Perth utilizes the Creating a Healthy Environment Greenhouse Gas Reduction Plan 2021 as a framework and guiding document to formulate specific goals, objectives, and implementation plans for the municipality of West Perth, and that the council endorse the continued involvement of the municipality of West Perth in a collaborative project between the project partners, which may include the county of Perth, municipality of West Perth, township of Perth East, township of Perth South, municipality of North Perth, Town of St. Mary's, and probably not, but we have in here the city of Stratford. Do we have a mover and seconder for that resolution or recommendation? Uh, moved by Councillor Tonkowski. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Bink. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed, if any. That is carried. Thank you. Very good. Okay, so that's the, the main part of, uh, of this council meeting. I don't mean main part, the main part's probably the best yet to come. But anyways, that uh, brings us down to the 2022 draft budget. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to our budget chair. Um, Sorry, Your Worship, can I, can I just request a, uh, a two minute recess? We just need to reset something on our live stream because we're streaming at too high of a quality. And if anyone's been paying attention, that's why um, we're losing a bit of our live stream connection. So if we can just take a short break. Yep. We'll take a, we, we'll take a, a two minute break. Uh, I know some people were glad to watch Jeff Marshall do the last environmental committee meeting that they were texting me, Daniel. That's what was actually showing was Jeff Marshall still. <laughs> we'll, so, um, wow. we'll uh, how much time do you break. want, uh, Jeff? Five minutes? We'll take a five minute recess. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back here and uh, our uh, budget chair, uh, Deputy Mayor Eight will take over and uh, as well, uh, our uh, treasurer Wendy will be here as well. So five minute recess. We'll start.
Okay, we're back here and uh, it appears that everything is working. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Deputy Mayor Wright, our budget chair. And I believe um, our treasurer, Wendy McMurray is uh, going to do a bit of a preamble uh, and bring us up to where we're at or up to speed and uh, go from there. So Doug, I turn the floor over to you. Well, and I'm gonna turn it over to Wendy right away because I think I've already talked to her about um, Wendy, do you want questions at the end of each section? You can go through your preamble first and then we'll we'll start. Okay. Um, sure. Yeah, so thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Eight and Council. Um, yeah, we, we'll kind of go through a, a few little beginning parts and then once we get into the uh, spreadsheets of each budget, we'll maybe take questions as they come up um, per, per manager that's going to be speaking on their budget. Um, okay, just give me one second here. Okay, so first of all, I just wanna thank uh, the senior leadership team and staff for uh, all their help in contributing, putting this budget together in the budget binder. Um, so tonight we are just going to review the 2022 budget uh, operating budget and then review changes uh, to capital since um, November 22nd. Um, so th this is the budget binder and or the budget book and if Lubitsa, Lubitsa is going to be doing the screen share and if she could just advance to um, maybe just some of that community profile so the next page. Seems to be stuck. We can start at demographics if that works too. So I was just going to do a quick overview of some of the uh, community profile in that um, the municipality of West Perth was incorporated in 1998 following the amalgamation of the townships of Logan, Hibbert, Fullerton, and the town of Mitchell. Um, the demographics. Um, we were able to pull 2021 census data from Stats Canada that shows a growth in the population from 8,865 people in 2016 to 9,038 in 2021 with a growth of 173 people. Um, I did put a little uh, snippet in there that the um, Census data is being phased in this year. It wasn't all available. Um, and once it becomes available, we'll populate it on our community profile on the website, but I put it there for reference um, so you could return back to it. Um, so in the book, it also summarizes the strategic plan um, that we, that which was presented to you guys on November the 22nd. And it also shows each department's organizational chart what services their department offers and key initiatives for 2022. And this is all from pages 91 to 101. I wasn't going to go through each department org chart or tasks, but if there were any questions so far, we gladly take them. We can't hear you, Doug. I can see your lips moving. You're, you're muted, Doug. If anybody wants a question, they'll have to speak up because I can only see three people. So speak up if you have a question, please. Okay. I'll, um, so next we have the budget summary report, which you'll find under um, your tab budget notes. And in this report, um, it just kind of highlights some of the um, information that is contained in um, the entire binder. It's quite a bit of summering to do, um, but we wanted to highlight some of the pressures that we were seeing in the 2022 budget. Um, so I'll just kind of review some of them. 
Um, so libido, we should be roughly on page. Hmm. Let me just flip over to the agenda. Should be on page. I'm sorry, I, I have difficulty scrolling through the um, through the book. Does so everybody be... have their book in front of them? Does, does everybody have a copy of the, the budget in front of them? I'm seeing a lot of head shakes, yes. So can she just continue on the way we are now without it being split screen? I know the people watching can't see it, but they can hear it. And I can reference the page number on the online version two, if that helps for people watching. So we're on page 102 of the online version and we're on, on tab budget notes um, in the binder. So I just wanted to make mention that um, based on last year's levy that um, for every $87,000, um, it e equals 1% of an increase on the levy. Um, so just keep that in mind when we kind of go through some of the pressures of maybe kind of a ballpark figure of where we're looking at. We, we are not bringing you a percentage tonight. Um, there's a lot for us still to work on and massage out in the budget, but we wanted to present what information we had. Um, so here are some of the budget pressures that we are looking at um, for 2022. So we're looking at incorporating a $200,000 in write-offs. Um, this is the full amount of the write-offs is approximately 260,000. And we're anticipating 60,000 for supplementals. So that would be um, additions, et cetera, from building permits that would come in um, to give a net effect of 200,000. And, but most of the write-offs are due to property class changes from residential to farm. Additionally, we have full-time staff um, and, and the cost of living increases and some new positions and merit increases. So we're anticipating roughly $235,000 increase um, for those line items. We have an increase in our insurance premium of $39,040. We have a loss in the OMPF or Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund of 69,600. We have additional donations that came in this year, um, an increase of 34,800. We are seeing an, a significant increase in municipal drainage works. Um, uh, these are assessments that are particular to um, roads or any property that we own. And this year we're seeing an increase of $200,000 in the budget. We have some new um, capital development, and that's 138,394. And then we also have loss in revenue for the months of January for the arena and the hall, and that's coming in approximately $35,000 just for the month of January. We have the principal and interest payment for the fire hall and the Henry Street Bridge, which equals $130,413. So these pressures are um, a little over a million dollars. There are two uh, parts of the budget that we're seeing that are contributing funds. So helping to offset some of those, and that is um, assessment growth that we've seen from growth in assessment. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that being 113,000 dollars and then we also received increase in our Ontario Community Infrastructure Fund of just a little over half a million. So with these pressures um, we didn't want to necessarily kind of give you a rate without having a further look. Uh, we have a lot of moving parts with closing off the financial statements uh, for 19 and 20. And we're still working on cleaning up stuff for 2021. It's fairly early to make any kind of assumptions on surplus and deficit for 2021. 
So what we'd like to do is consolidate the budget for you on March the 22nd. Um, that will produce a tax rate for you. Um, we'd like to bring back a reserve report um, kind of to help look at some financing that we can do um, in this year's budget. We'll be able to bring the county and the education rate and we'll be able to bring the cost per household um, to you. Um, was there any questions on that report? Okay. Um, Pin one, you're going to go to start at one. Are you going to do them all, Wendy? Um, I'm just going to, I'm going to just highlight the, so the, re, the assessment um, impacts. I wasn't going to highlight much other than because it's been a recirculated report, just that it was there for you for information. And then, see, we're, we're right into. Um, well, then, then I'll Nicholas, start with a question. Nicholas has a question right off the bat. Sure. So in this budget summary that you just laid out for us, in the capital section, you talk about bringing forward, um, carrying forward from last year, some capital works that didn't get completed. But you also then in the wording say, yeah, we're bringing forward $2 million worth of capital projects that didn't get completed, but we're only bringing forward $475,000 worth of levy from 2021. To, make, uh, to have that completed. I, I don't quite follow. Did, did we not uh, budget enough last year to get that uh, uh, those capital projects uh, uh, done? Oh, sorry. So that is, um, those carry forward projects aren't, weren't all raised by levy dollars. So some of it could be user, user fees. So if it's a water, wastewater project, um, that... Um, gets paid through for it from the uh, user fees. And then there was um, grants. Um, it works out to only 475 of that 2 million was levy. So I just wanted to make sure that it, if we had levied dollars last year that we're not going to relevy them this year, but I'd like to bring a report that kind of uh, plays that all out for you. Yes, please. You're, you're good, Nicholas? Yep. Okay, continue on. Okay, so for tonight's meeting, we're gonna focus on the operating budget and um, we're gonna jump um, kind of each tab. And so each manager is gonna kind of walk you through um, their budgets. And if you have any questions, um, they'll be happy to answer them. And this is where maybe if staff could, advance or help Levitsa by advancing through the slides as well, that would be great. Um, so we're gonna start at page 108 or tab one. And um, Dan, you're, you're up with council budget. Good evening, Council. Um, so the tab one is the Council budget. I think it's a, a pretty straightforward budget. Uh, assuming over the years, we are looking at continuing with the uh, conference convention budget pending COVID-19. Um, it's not something we've used, but we're hopeful that we'll be able to get uh, Council to some conventions this year. Um, moving forward, we just have small increases, basically in uh, IT, um, as well as kind of miscellaneous, just with the election, if there's any council turnover, um, that sort of thing. Other than that, everything else is, is uh, the same as it was. If there's any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Questions for Daniel? Seeing none, keep going. Hey, so I, I'm gonna do uh, the next, um, sheets in tab one, which is general administration. And the main change here is the additions to staff. So the addition would be the uh, asset management person and the accounts payable person. And then the other just merit increases. There's also a decrease in the OMPF funding, which was mentioned earlier. Um, 
but other than that is pretty straightforward. If there's any questions, I'll take them. I don't know where everybody went. So if anybody has any questions, somebody just click to the page. There you're back. Any questions for, for Wendy? Nicholas? Yep, where can we see the extra write-offs that you talked about in the budget pressure? Oh, sure. So on um, the first page of that, you'll see we brought in 60,000. I will say it is midway on the first page. It'll say um, the supplementals. So we're saying that we're, we're, we're estimating $60,000 in supplementals. And then in write-offs, it's just farther down on that page is 260. Those, those both look like the same amounts as we had last year. So, so where's the extra pressure is what I'm wondering. Oh, the extra pressure um, may not have shown up as a budget item um, because this year we've isolated all the tax accounts out so that it's easier reporting and it was just one line. So when I looked at it, I did not see that there was specifically $200,000 for write-offs. There was 25,000. Um, so in my estimates, it's, it's an increase on the budget pressure. Nicholas? Carry on, please, Doug. Okay. Oh, now I can bet. No one else? So tab two, fire. Sorry, Bill. That's okay. Can everybody hear me? <laughs> you betcha. Okay, I'm going to try my best. Um, uh, two things I want to bring to council's attention um, that are new um, expenses for this year. Um, the um, fire dispatch agreement with Owen Sound uh, increased our annual cost of dispatch by approximately $17,000. Uh, so that was uh, a new uh, fee that we started paying uh, 5th of January this year. And uh, the, uh, the second amount is the uh, interest that we pay uh, on the loan on the fire station. And uh, those two amounts uh, added together um, are uh, right around the $50,000 mark. Um, so um, uh, we've, we've other areas of the budget we looked at and uh, adjusted our wages uh, based on uh, three-year averages. And uh, our wage uh, estimate for 2022 is actually very similar to uh, what our wage estimate was pre-pandemic. Um, so we have been able to uh, identify some areas where we can uh, potentially reduce um, our, uh, our expenses in those areas. And it uh, uh, works out that uh, uh, this year's budget, uh, taking out those two big items is very similar uh, to last year's budget. Uh, we also were able to add in uh, some funding uh, to improve our uh, software uh, for FirePro uh, for our data management. So, uh, and I will gladly try and answer any questions. Questions for Chief Hunter? Seeing none, thanks Bill. We'll move on to Bob McLean, uh, CBO. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Wright. Um, highlights for this year's budget uh, with the transition from uh, bylaw enforcement moving over to a contracted service and more building permits. Uh, we're anticipating um, a, pro a shortfall in the ability to deliver that service. So we're looking at potentially adding a part-time person to the uh, building department staff. Uh, with our budget numbers, we're looking at uh, a probable a fee increase. Uh, the last fee increase we had was in 2008. So we're going to um, anticipate offsetting uh, permit income with uh, new fees to cover the cost of the department. Questions for Bob? 
Seeing none, I would have one. Bob, how would you get a half a person? Is it just a contract out of Kitchener or a student, a university student? I think that's where we would start. I know there's other municipalities within the county that are feeling the, the same pressure and there may be an opportunity to partner with them. To work together to maybe hire a full time six person. Months and six months to get caught up. Okay, yes. any other questions? Moving on to four, um, police services. I'm not sure, Jeff, would that be right? Uh, Daniel, do you want to cover police services or would you like me to? Well, I, I think I'm good. Um, so the highlights for this budget is I would note uh, there's been just some loss of revenue and changes in grants. Um, additionally, we've had the increase in the OPP contract and uh, we've definitely cut some, some expenses that have been absorbed into uh, Darcy's budget from a maintenance standpoint on, on the uh, OPP building and uh, grass cutting, et cetera. Uh, police services board budget uh, is, is status quo. Um, bylaw enforcement budget, we've gone to the contractor um, with tenant security, and we're looking at a start date there of March 14th, I will share um, with council. Um, so the increase is in bylaw enforcement there and conservation authorities, as council is aware, we had the um, presentations from all the CAs and, and there's some small increases there. Um, animal control is, is should be status quo. Uh, if there's any questions. Any questions for Daniel? I might have one too. At what point do we get a new contract with uh, the OPP or other? Uh, we haven't negotiated one in six years, I think, or seven years. Would that be this year? So the, um, the, the last police services contract, the extension of the OPP contract was in the first year of this term of council. So it'll be three years ago. Now, the, uh, that is a four year extension. So the next uh, contract will need to be negotiated in the first year of the new council. I believe it's the first year. It could even be the second year, but it's certainly a year away yet. Okay, we'll move on to tab number five. Just grants and that, would that be, I'm guessing here. Daniel? I'm sorry, it'd be uh, Director Kramer. Yeah, Mr. Mike? Yeah. So um, in uh, tab five for roads and transportation, uh, just minor adjustments in a lot of the operating expenses, pluses or minuses, just to reflect better on the year-to-date actuals from 2021. And uh, the only real glaring ones that you could see is that you could obviously tell that we had a very wet summer and spring and fall of last year because we did more grass cutting and grading. Other than that, um, the only other major item that we didn't uh, already discuss regarding any of the capital uh, is that we are proposing to add an additional section of paving on line 46 and that's from road 150 to road 164 which is three blocks or six kilometers and that's going to be primarily offset uh, by the additional grant funding that we received in December more than happy to answer any questions, if anyone has any. Mike, Tam, go ahead. Um, Mike, I have this question for any department, but yours is obviously the big ticket one. Um, if you knew, uh, like now, a target for next year, like if you had were directed to come in at 3% for next year, um, how hard would that be to do? Um, to be honest with you, I try to budget 2% per year. Um, this year is an off year because we are basically doing an additional uh, reconstruction project, and that is Henry Street. Um, it's very, um, we need to deal with the storm and sanitary there, which are big expense items. So we're, that's um, an additional um, increase over the two or three that I typically uh, try to aim for. but. Um, we're on a, a, a cycle program, or at least I am. So basically, I'm, I, all I do is try to aim for 2%. And 
that's the same with, for equipment and everything um, on that program. But the equipment is well over the 2% this year. As everyone is aware, it's more around 12 to 30% for equipment or vehicles. Um, just to let council be aware of that uh, I've started to investigate uh, with uh, LAS and it's a company called Canoe and um, it's basically a program with enterprise looking at the potential of changing our way of thinking of purchasing our fleet, our pickups and everything and going to more of a lease and our rental. So we're always looking at ways to cut our costs, but um, it's very hard to predict what's going on considering the, the volatility of the, the market right now and the way things are going. So it's uh, one of these odd years and it, I hate to say it's COVID related, but for equipment, it obviously is COVID related for the, the cost of materials. Thanks. Okay, Mike, Mike Kramer, I have, a, I have a question for you. In your budget, did you anywhere put the potential for a new sidewalk? MTE. No, that's uh, to be discussed in the uh, the March meeting. Okay, so, well, and it would only a little. Well, okay, March meeting, perfect. Yeah. Anybody else? Six, the mobility bus. Um, Wendy. I can speak on that one. There's really no change. There's an increase in the grant of fourteen thousand, so um, it's the standard twelve twelve thousand that's contributed from the levy. Thank you. I don't imagine there's any questions. Uh, is there any questions on the street light, uh, the street light um, special rates? The people of the of the small towns all pay for their own street lights. Um, we go to solid waste collection. Solid waste. Um, we had contractual increases from Blue Water Recycling of uh, 4.4. Uh, for the recycling portion and 2% on the uh, solid waste. Those are anticipated to be uh, uh, even out uh, for with the revenue, with the additional of increased fees that we plan to implement uh, this year. Subject to council approval on the, from the Environmental Services Committee. But otherwise, um, we are sticking to the same capital uh, about 50,000 to relocate that drain for our future cell expansion. And the only other note that I'd like to make is that under the landfill building maintenance, I uh, currently is showing 34,400. It should state uh, 9,000. Um, the, uh, the railing replacement, we received a quote just the other day and it came substantially under the anticipated cost of replacing the railing at our front end facilities. So there's a cost savings there. Any questions for Mike on the landfill? Seeing none, we'll move on to cemeteries and I'm, I'm guessing, Wendy? No, Daniel. It's, it's me, <laughs> thank you. Um, so there are some some proposed increases in the cemeteries budget this year, as council is aware, and it's been discussed. We have received some grant dollars uh, to to get new cemetery software, and we're looking at ways to utilize those those dollars moving forward as well. Uh, really, our focus is on maintenance and repair. Um, some cemeteries more than others uh, need to have some tombstones repaired, and it, it's not a cheap cost to do so. Uh, we are additionally. Um, needing surveys for some of our cemetery, cemeteries so we can basically maintain accuracy for our plots. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Anyone, everyone, every cemetery is broke down there for people to look at, the grass cutting costs and that. On to 10, the Ketterson Park, I'm assuming Darcy. Thank you, Deputy Wright. Um, yeah, a lot of, uh, throughout my budget, um, you'll see a lot of uh, revenue loss um, through the COVID um, pandemic. Um, Kenderson's a little bit uh, better off that way um, as it is as an outdoor sport. It does see, this, see the same usage, but tournaments are definitely down. 
hope it again to uh, to get that back up again this year. But uh, without any promises and without a crystal ball, we're just uh, hoping and praying for a, for a good year. So um, glad they take any any uh, questions on Kedersen. If not, I'll just move down to Lions Park. If that did, did Fullerton Ballpark have a windfall revenue that's not in here? Fullerton? Yes. Um, not that I. Jeff, yeah. I, I just I got to say it the right way. Yeah, I can answer that. Um, so we had a land transaction, which some of the revenue was to flow to Fullerton. And um, we're still, we actually have the final settlement, but I have to go through it. And I don't know what the amount of leftover from the 10,000 cap is. So that money will come into Fullerton at some point in time. I just don't have the number. It's a, it's under, it's under $4,000. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else for Darcy? Seeing none. You want me just to keep moving down the park step? Yep. I can probably just kind of sum them all up and then we can have any questions on all okay. of them. Um, Lions Park's a lot. You'll see a lot of differences in the wages. Um, one of them is just me being my first year in parks, trying to get the wages allocated correctly. Um, they're all the same wages, just a matter of where we charge them and how we use them. And we're really working with staff to uh, get them more in line with what the actual costs are. So you'll see that throughout my budget. Um, but you'll see negatives in some places and pluses in others. Um, other than that, there's not a lot um, to really speak on the Lions Park. Lions Park, um, again, just a bit of difference in wages, but um, and some in as far as uh, what projects we're doing. Um, and then other than that, throughout the other parks are mostly the same. Um, and then we're into Rec and Parks General. I don't know if we want to stop and just see if there's any questions in parks or. Um, yep. We can we can take a, a minute there after parks before we get on to. Sure. Anyone for Darcy have picked something out? Continue on, Darcy. Yep. So I move into Recreation and Parks just in general. Um, again, not a lot of change. Um, there's. Um, Health and safety facilities and recreation is obviously a big one. That's paying for security to cover the COVID. Um, again, that should end on March 1st, but uh, we'll see what the uh, provincial government announces. But there is projected to end on March 1st. Um, programs are pretty straightforward. We obviously did take the youth center on, which um, does have a cost to it. Um, and then onto the arena. Again, a lot of revenue um, we would have had. Um, I know quite show exactly there because of the up in fees so it doesn't exactly show the, the 3,000 30,000 that uh, 35,000 that when he talked about but they would have been there had we had January we took January revenue right out because it was not going to come in um, as well as just the community center is not being used for weddings and bucket does it's not being used for other rental meetings right now and it's hard to project when that might come back online so um, obviously we hope it's sooner than later but um that is a major factor is the loss of revenue. Um, the pool, again, has been a loss of revenue since the pandemic. Um, it just, uh, people are maybe a little hesitant to use it. Um, again, we hope that comes back to mind, but we're uh, budgeting more year-to-date actuals. Um, and other than that, you will see expenses are a little bit down the pool. We did spend, we spent a lot of money in capital, so less in operating, more capital on the pool this year. Um, and I had no additional capital projects that were added um, after the, the first capital meeting. So um, I will gladly take any questions on any of those. Um, we're back at it there for Darcy. Anybody? Oh, Dean? Um, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, so the booth receipts, Darcy, um, I see for 2021 year-to-date actuals was about a little over $15,300. So that um, that would have been received in the fall of 2021, the majority, correct? If not correct. all. Yeah. Yeah, that's, okay. that's all from the, the startup in October to to the end of December 2021. Okay, so that, that looks encouraging, like an encouraging 
um, foreshadowing for 2022 that we can expect that number to be um, closer to 50 or 60,000 potentially. Yeah, I think or, I'd like uh, 42. And again, a little bit of a guess because we haven't had a full year, but um, I'm, I'm pretty confident we can get there. I, I feel like the booth has been a, a really big success. We've had some really, really good young workers in there. And it's uh, obviously been a bit of a learning uh, for all of us, but I think it's been a, a, been a really big success. Well, that's a good news story. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. We did get all three of our tournaments off, though, too, right? The men's, the, the women's, the men's, and the ringette. So we did get our three tournaments off in that. Correct. Yeah, I think the, only, the big one that we really canceled was a, a bonds bill, but I think that was for 2022, if I'm not mistaken. But... Anything else for Darcy? Off the hook, Darcy. Thank you. Looks like we'll be moving on to the library and Rosemary. I, I guess a lot of this right there. Good evening. Um, there's really only one thing I was going to point out this evening that is a little bit different from last year. And uh, that would be the salaries and wages for the staff. In 2021, we were in the process of updating and in a couple of cases, creating job descriptions for the library in anticipation of hiring new people. At this time last year, we didn't know yet though where those new job descriptions were going to fit in the pay bands. So the uh, salary budgets that we, um, that we submitted last year were kind of an average between the current and the higher salary band just to be safe. But this year, of course, we have that exact information. We know exactly where those um, uh, those job descriptions fell in the pay bands. And so that has been adjusted according to each, each individual staff member and their years of service. Um, every, all of the other changes were relatively minor. And I believe you've got notes on the right-hand side of the spreadsheets in front of you. Uh, we also have the library board chair, Jesse Britton on the uh, call this evening, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Anything for Rosemary or Jesse? Who? I believe he's on the call. Yeah, he did a chat. He chatted in here too. Yes. Anything for them? And then we'll move on forward to tab uh, tab twelve, which is the planning. Daniel. Um, so the, the really the two items I'll bring forward to council is uh, we have a relatively conservative um, budget for the revenue side of things and on the expense side, uh, we no longer have the planning contract. Uh, otherwise, that would be a similar budget from last year. So if there's any questions. Anything for him? Uh, tab uh, 13, uh, Jeff. Great, thank you. The um, tab 13 includes a number of committee budgets. Um, on the first one is economic development. And the only thing I wanna highlight is that we moved the money on the line 8100, 3135, which was um, where we were putting the youth council money in to, we moved that over to the recreation department budget. So you'll see we budgeted zero for 2022 there but we actually moved that over to recreation where it more logically fits. We've left money in this budget for the economic development committee to have some kind of a, an in-person event this year, which we're hopeful that we'll be able to, and that's shown in the next line down um, under uh, revenue code 8100-3137, and the economic development committee will be coming up with some plan for that. Um, and then only, the only other thing I would mention about economic development is we don't have a capital budget per se in here for the, um, the next actions on the Heron Business Park, which are somewhat dependent on negotiations with Cargill Limited. If all goes well, we'll bring a capital budget um, to, uh, for that as we go, rather than trying to predict one now, which is um, a, bit, a lot difficult to predict. So we would do that capital budget as it came up. On to other committees, um, heritage and culture, very similar to the previous year. Um, 
The community grants are included in this section of the budget. And as Wendy mentioned in her preamble, the amount for community grants is increased by $34,800. When council completes their um, deliberations on the budget on March the 21st, you'll have to decide if we're bringing that whole $34,000 in or whether you're going to reduce it by whichever grants you don't approve. And then energy environment's budget is very similar to previous years. Um, we have some projects we're planning and we've run that by energy and environment uh, in their wetlands and trails and general. So that's that group of budgets. If there's any questions on any of them, I will try to answer them and I may need help from Darcy. Questions for Jeff or Darcy about trails and those uh, committees? If not, uh, Deputy Mayor Ide, I'll move on to tab 14, which is the BIA budget. Uh, the BIA budget is similar to previous years. It's a special levy that's generated from the defined properties in the very specific, specifically defined BIA area. There's no change in the tax levy for BIA being proposed. So we're not changing that rate. It generates the same money it has generated in previous years. And the BIA has a number of initiatives there that if there are questions between myself and Councillor Bell, who happens to be the chair of the BIA, we can, uh, we can work to answer them. Anything for Jeff or Sherry on the uh, BIA budget, which really isn't a tax budget for us? Seeing none, we'll move on to drainage and Daniel. So I'm just going to screen share quickly. Um, so for the drain budget, what I'd like to point, point out is um, the grant on the revenue side. Uh, we're looking at an increase in receiving that grant for the drainage superintendent. Um, on the expense side, we are working in cleaning this up, but we are coding um, all, all the drain expenses to the Fullerton ward. So that's why there's the discrepancy uh, among wards and we'll have that cleaned up. Additionally, what we're showing there is, is an increase. Um, this is all the worst case scenario of money that we've already committed to uh, based on assessment um, estimates that we've received to date. So hopefully we go under this budget, but this would be pretty well the worst case scenario if everything were completed this year um, that's outstanding for drains. Um, that would be all I'd highlight. Any questions for Daniel about drainage? Oh, I thought Nicholas would. Okay, thank you. Well, I uh, I don't know if it's important or not. Sorry. So you, you, we're up to date now on invoicing, from what I understand, uh, invoicing out the uh, drainage works. But you're saying that uh, we have seen more than two hundred thousand dollars worth of. Uh, uh, drainage works, additional drainage works for the municipality of West Perth uh, coming up in this uh, 2022 uh, season. Uh, and, and I just can't put my finger on that much drainage works that, that we have approved or gone through our committees to have uh, coming up in 2022. Yeah, and they're not all by any means where we were approved last year. Um, some of these are outstanding, uh, incomplete construction from, from five years ago plus. So um, you know, it, like I said, it is a worst case scenario. There is a bit of budget there for, for other minor expenses, but um, for the most case, it's all, it would be our portion um, from the assessment that we, we would need to pay. And we can provide council with a list of all the outstanding accounts if, if they would like to see that. Um, we have that information readily available, but um, that, that's the number. All right, Nicholas. Yes, thank you. thank you. Dean's got his hand up. Where do you go? Uh, through you, uh, Mr. Chair, I think this in future, this drainage um, item will become more of a higher priority by necessity um, as the ag sector continues to upgrade its infrastructure. So we can expect more of the same expense in years to come, not less. 
Thank you. Um, okay, Dan's off the hook. Uh, Mike Kramer will be the water man. Okay, so first one is uh, <coughs> wastewater. Um, as Wendy mentioned earlier, uh, with uh, regards to wastewater and water, it's a user fee system. Uh, we have uh, fairly uh, significant revenues to help offset any of our expenses and it assists with our capital works. As I mentioned earlier that we are doing an additional capital project this year, a street, um, which is Henry Street. Uh, the sanitary is extremely deep and the storm sewer is extremely wide and deep too because it services the entire northeast section of Mitchell and heads down towards Henry Street Bridge. Uh, if you could recall, um, we had to install primarily a lot of that work uh, on Henry Street uh, through the uh, development for Bob Scott subdivision uh, there to the east at Silers Field. But otherwise than that, um, regarding wastewater, uh, there's just a couple of minor revisions and um, the dollar amounts uh, need to be switched around between um, the building and equipment on the wastewater budget, but the totals are pretty much the same. And um, the only other item, if you want to discuss water on 17, is that um, also the additional projects that we're doing, but we're also anticipating and hopefully receiving the ICIP uh, Green Stream Intake Grant. Um, so um, that is if we receive uh, federal approval for that grant. More than happy to answer any questions if you have any. Uh, questions for Mike? Seeing, oh, Dean? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. So Mike, um, on the Henry Street, that segment uh, you mentioned uh, earlier, that's, and in this presentation, that's pretty extreme portion of that uh, run of uh, wastewater and um, and potable water, correct? Correct. So you put you once. So I guess my point is, once you start um, building the upstream, then you have to uh, take care of the downstream and accordingly, correct? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we did this we did this section on St. George Street when we did the repaving of St. George Street at the beer store. So now we just have that little bottleneck um, in between, well, by the beer store between St. George and St. Andrew. And then um, the developer um, uh, to the west of us will be doing the other section of Henry Street to Pond when he develops Thames. Okay, thank you. Extension. Other questions for Mike for water and wastewater? Well, that looks like it. Maybe we can quit. All right, Wendy, I'm sure you have some things to go over. Just want to highlight the uh, next tab, which is uh, the debt info. And so in there, you'll see an increase in um, the portion for payment in 2022 because we're I think last year we only had a partial payment for the fire hall in the Henry Street Bridge. And so in 2022, it is a full year's worth of payment. And that is an increase of 130,000. So, and I also wanted to make mention that we are doing construction draws currently for the admin uh, building and our construction interest rate on the last draw was 0.69%. So I'll take any questions if there is any. Questions for Wendy on uh, payments. Seeing none. Okay, then we'll get into the capital. Um, so on the next tab, the capital projects tab, there's three pages of summary of um, all the capital requests. And behind those three pages, then there's about 58 pages of detailed project. Um, that is listed and so to help organize 
kind of the asks that have happened, um, I've identified when they kind of went to the meeting under presented to council. So most of them will have that November 22nd date. Um, and then there's a few that kind of came through from then till now. And so just to highlight, um, I made a column so you guys could reference um, those meetings. So if there's any kind of questions on capital, I'm happy to take them. Questions on the three pages of capital. I know we went through a lot of this, didn't we? Kind of knew what was coming down the pipe, order trucks and pickups. Yeah, the big uh, capital project this year would be the Ketterson Park and uh, the admin building. And uh, the admin building will be financed partially and the money is mostly set aside already for Ketterson Park, correct? Correct, we have some grant funding for that and then we're doing the sponsorship program um, that's been set up. It was just on Facebook tonight. So are you gonna continue on to the capital budget request for Dungy Road Nut or is that going to be I, well, we I can go through like, so we've want, gone. Well, we don't have to go through all these pages if, no. if people. I, I figured most have seen this yeah. back in November. Um, Does anybody have a question on any of these 50 pages? Henry Street, no, no okay. And then the maps, you don't need to see the maps either. What else do you have for us, Wendy? That's, that's it. Um, Is there any good news out of this budget? <laughs> it, it's coming in a little higher than other years. Um, it, in particular, it's the financing. So I, we want to look at it um, closely before we give you a rate. Um, there's a lot of capital coming in, in, in this budget. And so um, if you guys have kind of like a target you would like us to reach, we would definitely go back to the drawing board and come up with some financing options. Um, for, Walter, for it. Excuse me, Walter, can you remember, what's, what was the county's portion? 3.87, 3.52? I thought we were uh, around 5%. Well, oh, I thought that there was a part off that though. I thought it was more, okay, well, Walter and I think the county's about 5%. That could be right. I thought there was like a 1.2 off it for, 3.8 or something, but. Well, we added a bit onto it uh, for uh, for uh, some tree planting or something, which brought mm -hmm. it up a, a point, That's, yes. something of a percent. Yes. Okay, so, so does, is there any other questions, any suggestions, any digestion? Wendy? Can I just highlight some of the um, other neighboring municipalities and, and their rates, just so you can have a sense of kind of what others are are looking at. So yeah. we kind of dealt with the county. Um, City of Stratford, they're coming in quite high at 7.6. Perth South is 5.9. Perth East wasn't available. And St. Mary's is sitting at a draft budget of 1.06. Nicholas? I'd rather you not compare rate increases. I'd rather you compare the- Dollars. Dollars. Uh, oh, oh, the um, what's the number called that uh, the the where you have the assessment of two hundred twenty thousand multiplied by one point one five four three what, what's that uh, number called the tax rate I'd rather tax you compare ratio tax, yeah the tax rate that that shows us actually much higher than many of those ones than you uh, than you mentioned okay I will note that for the next meeting for. Like we might only be eight dollars a house when they're eighteen dollars a yes. house, depending on that's or what, vice versa. Yeah, or I should have maybe give you that hint today. Uh, Mike, did you have your hand up? Oh. Yep. Um, I think what would be fair is uh, is what we go with for the cost of living. Like I, th I think if that's what we pay our people, that's what would be fair to expect for to get back from the taxpayers. So I, I think that uh, that. 2.4 or 2.3, whatever it was, is, is a good target somewhere in that neighborhood. And and also, I'd like to see us going forward, I'd like to see us set out a benchmark for future years or maybe do a five-year budget. I know it's hard with some things like fuel prices and moving targets, but uh, 
I, th I think we could simplify this process somewhat. Good with that, Randy or Mike, Nick? Well, I would say we would love to do a multi-year budget. Um, we just need to get caught up a little bit and get some of these past years behind us before we can tackle on some of that. And we're onboarding FMW. So that will also help us in um, moving away from Excel spreadsheets and making it a little more efficient for staff to process some of these numbers. And uh, we can definitely set up a multi-year budget at that time. Yep. Nicholas, yeah, and I'm, I think oh, Dean had his hand up after Nicholas. So now that we've uh, finished uh, 2020, uh, the actuals, uh, could, could you include that also showing the surplus that we had in 2020 to pull that forward into a 2021? And then as we get through 2021 uh, information, we'll have uh, hopefully some surplus that we can pull forward again. So I'd like to see that uh, in some of these uh, line items uh, as well too. And uh, could I make a comment about the percentage that you have under each of these uh, budgeted columns? I'd rather compare it to the actual that we have spent, not, not budgeting uh, from budget to budget, how much it is increasing or decreasing. It should be budget compared to how much we actually uh, spent. And uh, could you include that on a few more of the, the summary lines as well too, that it's not just on the bottom line, that it's in some of these uh, subsections uh, as well. Yep, I can note that and uh, we'll see what we can bring forward. And Dean, did you have a question or did? I did, well, more of a, I guess a question comment. slash comment or observation. Um, I did a quick tally of the levy requirements for each of the departments through each of the tabs of the book. And I came up to a total of just over 12 and a half million. And if I recall correctly, our 2021 requisition was 8.7 million. So I would be interested to see where the remainder 3.8 million, uh, how we cover that. Um, and I guess the other question or more of a comment or observation is that even though we've completed some significant milestone capital projects or are about to in terms of bridges and fire halls and um, administration building and arena upgrades. I think it's pretty clear to me that the pressure is still on in years to come to maintain the infrastructure base and the uh, human resources base that we have in the municipality going forward. So I guess that's to Councillor Tam's point about uh, simplifying a process so that we can have a multi-year uh, budget in place once we get caught up from past years, as Wendy mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Anyone else? Anyone else on the right hand of my screen? Question? What about the new guy? Any questions? Don't want to point you out. I don't even think anybody introduced you to the live audience on your first meeting, Ryan. Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me and uh, look forward to helping out with anything I can. Um, but uh, questions of the budget, it's certainly been a lot to take in over the last couple of days and lots of reading. So um, just uh, kind of absorbing everything I can right now and uh, look forward to helping in any sort of capacity I can. Thank you. So uh, Wendy, Jeff, the budget portion is done. Oh, Jeff. Sure, I'll, I'll offer a couple of comments. Um, that one question from Dean about adding up all the departments and coming up with 12 and last year's record requisition of eight, that's what Wendy's meaning when we have to look at um, the capital that was shown as being funded at a levy and how we can fund that with reserves and other measures. So that'll be what we'll be bringing back to you um, for more information because obviously um, we wouldn't be looking at that kind of tax increase. We just have to line up the um, the requisitions uh, with what comes out of reserves. And so that'll be coming back. And then secondly, on the overall discussion, you know, I, I find myself offering this comment every year to council that staff will bring back um, the cost for various measures. And um, it ends up being a tough decision from council to prioritize the asks and identify what we can do and fund at a levy 
what we may have to go to for more reserves um, if there are projects we need to cut um, in order to meet some target that is identified by council. It's really not a staff position to identify that target and we always appreciate hearing the feedback from council about where you'd like to be and uh, we'll provide you the information to help you to get where you're comfortable approving. And then finally, I just wanna say that um, we were a little surprised and I think we were much more hopeful that the number that we're likely gonna land on and bring back to you was gonna be quite a bit lower, but there were more pressures than we anticipated. Some of these are growth related pressures where we'll experience the pain now and begin to receive the assessment one in two years down the road, there's a slight delay for the assessment to come online. And, uh, and the other thing I would remind you of is last year we did essentially zero, which um, it made sense for last year, but I think that's catching up to us a little bit this year. And I would encourage you to think of last year and this year together as an average. And um, those are just some comments I would offer in thinking forward to the decision that we'll be making on March 21st. Uh, Dean's got his hand up again. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, I guess uh, when I pose my question or observation, and um, Jeff touched on it, I wasn't. I was indeed anticipating something um, of a uh, strategy coming from Wendy in our next meeting, but I guess, uh, and Jeff also mentioned that some of these are our expenses are related to the growth of the municipality. And I understand that, but I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to get at is that as this growth process continues, we're getting closer as a municipality, we're getting closer to our saturation point and our capacity to uh, sustain, sustain future growth, but also maintain existing infrastructure and uh, existing human uh, resource base, so we're we're getting we're getting closer to our ability our ability to uh, keep uh, keep everything moving uh, without uh, overwhelming ourselves with overextending our financial cap capabilities and those of the ratepayers. Thank you, Dean. Anyone else? Mr. Brick, would that bring this portion of the budget to the end? Um, thank you, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. I, I just wondered if Wendy had any final comments about next steps and what to expect. I'd, I'd give the treasurer the final word at this moment. I, I definitely appreciate everyone's comments. Um, and yes, our observations were that it was quite high and we do need to look at some financing strategies um, it has been difficult with being in multiple years, uh, 19, 20, and 21, and now into 2022. Um, we definitely hope to be able to bring a financial strategy and bring um, stability to the municipality. Um, and hopefully we can bring some of those numbers to the next meeting for financing this budget. And then we'll be able to have strength in our future years. Thank you for your comments and your patience for my first year. Jeff? And, and thank you, Doug. Contrary to what I just said, I am going <laughs> to uh, offer one more thing. And I apologize. The clerk pointed out to me. Um, first of all, there'll be a report at the March 7th meeting. And uh, that's what Wendy's referring to there. And then the 21st meeting for the deliberation. And secondly, uh, we didn't include a motion in the report, but I would... Um, I would ask that uh, perhaps the chair put forward a motion that the information present, the chair of the budget committee put forward a motion that the information presented tonight be accepted uh, for information or the report presented tonight be accepted for information. And then there's a mover and seconder. We can vote on that. We can get back to the regular agenda. That's exactly how I was going to say it. Do we have a mover? Uh, Ryan, Councillor Duck, and a seconder, Councillor Rose. All in favor? Thank you. I would like to thank the other people like Terry and uh, Monique, who didn't actually come on, but there's, as everybody knows, there's about eight or nine other people who don't speak on this. Thank you for uh, being there in case there was any questions. And uh, now I'll hand it back to uh, Mayor McKenzie.
Okay, thanks, Doug. Um, so uh, yeah, good discussion there and uh, um, get some suggestions for, uh, for further on down the road. So um, carrying on, the next item on our agenda is uh, correspondence and there's a letter there from uh, Perth County Federation of Agriculture. Um, council reports, and I'm not sure who's doing this one, uh, is the uh, 2021 Mitchell Annual Drinking Water Report and Summary. And I'm looking, I'm not sure. That's just for information? Yeah, I, I would say it's just for information. If there's questions, it can be to Councillor Matheson, who's the chair of the Environmental Services Committee and supported by Operations Manager Mike Kramer. Right, okay. Um, and, and we had that report, uh, it was circulated. Was there anything there you wanted to highlight at all, uh, Councillor Matheson? No? Uh, no, nothing at this time. Okay. Mayor, All right. Mayor McKenzie, we might have skipped over 8.1, the Perth County Federation. No, I just did it. The Federation of Agriculture? Yep. Sure. Time delay between us and Florida. It must have been, it, I was going to say we responded, the county responded to that letter. Um, yeah, it was under correspondence, and, and I just mentioned it as, as we received it as correspondence. Could you say, Doug, if it's okay, Walter, could you say how you responded? Um, the Perth, me, the Perth County tax rate had already been set when these letters started coming out. Um, like they wanted it lowered to, uh, what was it, Walter, Walter any 22.5? 20, 22 or the, somewhere the in there. The Perth yeah. County budget was already accepted. Uh, it'll be two weeks ago Thursday in, uh, and then finalized this past Thursday when their letter writing campaign started. Yeah, but but I, I think we're not we're not talking about the same thing that yeah, you can set the budget, but then you also set the tax rates. So you're telling me that you have already done at Perth County the, the tax rate bylaw. Yes, the, the tax, well, Walter can finish that. The tax rate, we would have to have it and set it first. As in other years when they've asked if, can you adjust the tax rate for agriculture, right? They, they did it three years ago, they came a lot. And then we have our budget set now. And our rates yep. are there, but our our budget is set. I think Nicholas is on the right path there. Our budget yep. is set, and traditionally, what happens after the budget is set, uh, Corey, our treasurer, will come in, um, and and uh, will say the impact. If you if you tweak the um, the percentages of uh, of how that uh, budget is realized, and I'm not sure. Um, I haven't because I'm not involved with the county as much as what I was, but I assume that, that uh, maybe Corey will be coming again uh, with, with the impact of, of tweaking it. Because if you tweak it one way, the impact, it doesn't have an impact uh, on, on the other. Um, and I don't, uh, Wendy, maybe you're more qualified than, uh, than I am to, to comment on that. <laughs> well, you, you did just fine, Walter. Um, so I was talking to Corey today and, um, Definitely, uh, the treasurers are, are meeting and, and going to discuss it. Um, so in simple terms, if there's a $10 million that needs to be raised, um, that doesn't change. Um, if the ratios change, it's still $10 million that's needed. It just distributed differently across the classes. And so hopefully that helps um, clarify anything. Okay. Can we uh, move on then? Um, like I just treated it as correspondence, Doug. I thought that's all uh, all it was. So uh, I mentioned it and um, Jeff, you wanna comment? I, I, I think uh, Wendy's brought a tremendous amount of clarity in terms of the total amount that's needed. I think the, the, the important part to add here that many of the councillors will recall from past debates, but the public online may not re realize is that that rate is set by the county. It is the count, county's um, role to set that rate. So while we've been asked to consider it at West Perth, it's up to the county to determine that distribution. And that's why the letter went to the county. And, and so um, that I just wanted to clarify whose responsibility that is. Yeah. And I guess uh, further to that um, adds to why we have been asking for the province to do reassessment. 
um, because there has been a, a shift, uh, obviously, to agriculture. And, and I think if there was a reassessment, uh, it would shift back. So uh, it, uh, I think that's the preferred way of, of, uh, of resolving some of these issues as to uh, who pays what, I guess. But um, um, I know the county did make a presentation at the Roma conference, but I'm not sure what the outcome of that was um, at this time. Okay, uh, moving on then. Um, the annual drinking water report, and uh, I do have a recommendation here if there's no further questions on that, that the Council of Municipality of West Perth receives the 2021 Mitchell Annual Drinking Water Report and Summary. Do we have a mover and seconder for that, please? Councillor Matheson moves, and Councillor Tinkowski seconds. Um, all those in favor? Opposed, if any, that is carried. Thank you. Uh, we do have a number of bylaws, uh, four to be exact, I guess. Uh, bylaw 13 is a bylaw to authorize the execution of a services agreement between the Municipality of West Perth and Votes Canada. Uh, bylaw 20 is a bylaw to amend bylaw 57 to provide for collection of actual costs for the improvement and Anderson Branch. Um, bylaw 21 is to appoint a bylaw enforcement officer for the municipality of West Perth. And bylaw 22 is a bylaw to provide for the collection of actual costs for the maintenance of the McDougal municipal drain. So uh, if there's no questions on any of those bylaws, the recommendation is that the municipality of West Perth gives first, second, and third, and final reading to bylaw 13, 2022, 20, 2022, 21, 2022, and 22, 2022. So there's our two, two, twos and twos again on this 22nd day of February. So if I can have a mover and seconder for that, that would uh, be great. Uh, Councillor Bell and Councillor Murray. No further discussion. Okay, all those in favor? That is carried, thank you. Um, announcements are there. Um, I guess coming up, uh, the annual general meeting for the BIA is coming up on the 2nd of March. Um, and as was mentioned earlier in the meeting, our next, uh, our next uh, regular meeting will be March the uh, 7th. And the rest are, are there for your perusal, I guess. Uh, any notices of motion? Seeing none. Uh, any other business at this time? And I know I didn't introduce Ryan at the start of the meeting, but uh, we do welcome uh, Councillor Duck uh, to our meeting tonight. Um, and uh, it was kind of a baptism by fire, I think, uh, going into uh, going into a, a budget right at the first meeting. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, we hope uh, we hope you survived, and and uh, it's great. We're glad to have you on board. Uh, if there is nothing else. Uh, uh, confirmatory bylaw, uh, bylaw number 23, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Corporation of the Municipality of West Perth, be read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed. We have a mover and seconder for that. Um, Councillor Rose, and I'm looking at Councillor Duck here for, uh, get him on the record book. Okay, seconded by Councillor Duck. Okay, all those in favor? That is carried. And finally, a motion to adjourn that uh, we adjourn our council meeting at uh, 9 16 p.m. Mover and seconder for that. Uh, Councillor Rose, Councillor Trinkowski. Uh, all those in favor? That is carried. So we are now adjourned. Thank you very much. <laughs>